Hello and welcome to the video for what is flow control, the for loop node. I have created two quick examples here. They're not going to be very exciting, but we will illustrate what the for loop node does in the event graph. When I click here, it will print out 10 numbers along with 10 actual backgrounds. This is using our custom node widget that you actually can't see, but it basically counts 1 through 10 and displays it on the screen. Our for loop with break will run until it finds the number 7 and then print it out. So here's what we do. In our graph, we have our for loop here. The for loop is pretty simple. It has an execute in wire and two input integers, the first index and the last index. First index is any number you wish to put in, same with last index, and it basically refers to how many times we're going to run this event. So for this one, I've set the first to one and the last to 10. Now, every single time from one through 10, it's going to run the loop body as an execute wire, and it will have the index of which number we are currently at. For example, what I'm doing is creating our little combo box dropdown widget, setting the value in there from one, two, three, whichever index we're on, and then adding it to a vertical box for you to see. So pretty simple. The second version is the loop with the break. Basically, the loop with the break is identical in terms of the input. It has the execute in, first index, last index, but it also has a break execute wire. If this is ever triggered as triggered, it's basically if it's ever triggered, it's executed, the loop will stop and it will fire the finished completed event. So this is useful, for example, if you're sorting through a list of things until you find something, and then once you find it, there's no reason to look through the rest. If you have 100 items and what you want is number 36 because it contains a certain name or he has a certain item on his inventory, there's no reason to go through all 100 once you find your actual target. So how this works is basically I'm, I have an int array. This basically has seven elements in it. I just have random numbers 12 15 64 basically some random numbers and i'm looping between the first index of the array which is always zero and the last index minus one well the last index is the length minus one and that gives us the last index so between zero and six which is all seven of our elements for the loop body itself basically i'm looking to see did we find the number five if we did i set it to break the loop and then we break the loop if not, it will loop through all seven elements and then print out the actual iteration count, which index we were out, which index we were at. So when we run that example, you'll see it says seven because it ran seven times and it never found five. Now, if we were to go back in there and let's say we said 29, which is one of our valid values, and we hit run, you'll notice it found it and it found it at iteration four. So there you go. That's a quick and simple way to loop through a bunch of data. And once you find something, you basically break out. So like I said, for the breaking, all I'm doing is calling a custom event called break the loop, which is tied into the break right here. And that's it. The for loop is pretty simple. If you have a large amount of data or a set amount of data that you want to do something with, and you either want to do it all the way through, maybe you're setting up uh, let's say maybe you have a 10 by 10 grid full of chairs that you're supposed to set up in a room. Well, you can run the loop through 10 times with another loop inside of that 10 times on the X here and 10 times on the Y. And then you have a nice, easy 100 things set up in the appropriate location. And the break is useful when you want to do the same thing, but maybe you happen to have a broken chair in your inventory. And if it comes to that, you need to break out and alert somebody.